Hey everybody, Lex DeVille back for another lesson on advanced proposal writing. But uh, we're actually in tactics and techniques right now, so we're going to check out some secret squirrel info gathering stuff. Basically, it's some things that I'm looking for in the profile that help me to get in rapport, to help me if to help me even know if I want to apply to this gig in the first place. Stuff that's telling me, is this a good client and is there anything I can use? to find out if I want to work with this person, if they're how how I can approach them in my proposal, just different things I can say and other cool stuff like that. So there's eight things that I've listed out and you can kind of see the little graphic on the screen, but we're just going to go through these real quick. So the first thing is going to be the headline. The headline has to kind of catch my attention. Usually it's got to have keywords. That's number one is their headline it needs to catch my attention. It needs to be something that says, like screams out to me this is the one this is the gig that depending on what it says once you click on this gig it's probably the one for you lex and you're gonna like it so something i don't know let's say back when i was working for a lot of coaches i might look for life coach copywriter needed so i'm a guy who writes copy for coaches and that's what they need i'm gonna click on that because that's gonna look like that's good info right that looks like something i might be interested in so that's the first part Number two is getting into the body of their proposal. So some things I'm looking for whenever I'm looking at these proposals, I'm gathering info. I want to know, first of all, is their proposal long or short? Because I like to work with people who write short or not proposals. I always say proposals. I like to write and work for people who have short job posts. Those people are usually high level. They're big picture thinkers. They just want to hand over the work to someone who's going to get it done. And uh, I look for other things in here. I look for how much detail they put into it. Even short proposals sometimes have a lot of detail. If there's a lot of like, if I feel like they're going to be a micromanager based on they're saying they need this and this and this and this, and they've got a deadline coming up, they need this tomorrow. If they, especially deadlines, if they say they need this right now, that's a no go for me. I'm not going to do that. So I'm looking for anything that even hints that they're a micromanager or that other things, maybe that they think they know more about this than other people. So if they say, I'm a copywriter, so I know what copywriting is, and I'm looking for a copywriter to work for me, that's a no-go for me. I don't want to work for someone who already thinks they know everything and that's going to be breathing down my neck with this stuff. So I look for questions. I look for them to create value in the body of their or their job post, if they're trying to create value in some way for the freelancer, that's awesome. That's a really good sign. That's good info you can pull out. But other stuff you can pull out, you can look at their words. Are they, what sensory language are they using? Are they using sound or sight words? You know, are they saying, if this sounds like you might be a fit, then you know that they're thinking in terms of sound in the moment. You might be able to use that for mirroring their language later on. If you want to talk about, if you want to say, hey, if any of this sounds good to you, then go ahead and contact me. That would kind of be mirroring them a little bit like we talked about before to get in rapport. Um, sight words would be, I'm looking for a copywriter. And you say, you're looking for a copywriter. So now you're mirroring them. You're using their sensory words. You can find out stuff like that. If they're talking about analytical terms, we'll talk about this more in the personality section, but analytical terms, if they're saying stuff like analysis or computing or you know, calculations, they might be more of a logical thinker. So that's something you can find out from their job post. And that's good information because you can use that language when you write your proposal. If they say, if they're using a lot of emotion words, if they're saying they're a spiritual coach and they're really into connection and they speak from the heart, that's going to be emotional words. You might want to use more of those. And you've always, of course, got your, uh, your action word people, your doers. They're going to be constantly speaking from a place of action. So I'm ready to move forward with this as soon as possible. If you're a copywriter who can kick down the door with your words, then then reach out and apply to my gig. And you know, they're going to talk about kicking stuff down or punching through walls or, you know, just action words, any kind of action word. That's something you would want to look for. These are just little subtle things that give you hints into who this person is. And it helps you write your proposal because you can then use that information to not approach from your own worldview, but to approach from their worldview. And that's the, that's everything. If you can get inside their mind, if you can think like they think, if you can see the world the way they see the world as best as possible, they're going to feel like you are like them. And they like people who are like them. We like people who are like us. So let's move on. Number three and four on this list are the fixed price is 
is it a fixed price rate or is it hourly? If it's a fixed price, I'm kind of looking at the amount. So like I'm looking at the amount and I'm looking at that compared to the little number signs. You know, if it's got one number sign, if it's got one dollar sign, then it's... They